Hey guys, it's Ikenna from CNC Labs, and today we're going to be going through some of the questions that you guys propose on our laser beam live stream. Uh, if you were around for that live stream, you know that it was a complete disaster. We had horrendous internet issues. We were trying to stream from our phones. We were trying to hotspot. It was pretty crazy. So I figured I would collect all the questions from the live stream, as many as I could, and I would try to get to them, answer them, and hopefully give you guys a bit of clarity if you didn't get that already, just by emailing us and submitting your questions. You can always do that. So even if I did miss a question or you have additional questions, feel, feel free to send us in a technical uh, help ticket about the laser. Anything that, is, that has the word laser in it will get sent directly to me and I can answer your questions directly. So let's get right into it. Josh Sinekin asks, Air Assist, do you have a tapped mount point for it? So for the Air Assist, we do actually have four tapped holes on our custom aluminum heat sink, which will hopefully be mounted by magnets. So I'll show you that. This is the heat sink right here. It's a 12 volt radio fan and a 3D printed kind of uh, vent for the airflow to be pushed towards laser and clear the path for it and it will just slide on like this it'll connect via the magnets and then you just grab this little two pin connector and you plug it into the extension cable right there okay on to the next one josh sinikin asks for someone who has never used the laser do you recommend getting all the lenses offered do you notice differences so for simplicity's sake we include the g2 lens in every laser because the g2 lens can cut the best because it is the most efficient lens, so most power is being produced, and it can still engrave really well. So if you're looking for simplicity, you just go with the lens that we include, the G2 lens. You can cut, you can engrave. If you're looking for more detailed engraving, you're going to want the three element lens. It has the smallest beam focal spot, so it's going to give you the most detail with your engraving. I am Joe asks, curious about the sale price seen on the other stream. So for the sales price, so there really isn't a sales price on the laser. We just decided to give away the safety glasses for free with your pre-order. So after the pre-order is over and we begin shipping our laser, the safety glasses will cost an additional $60 Canadian. Andy Nelson asks, what is the three element lens? The three element lens actually uses three optical lenses in the actual in the single lens to create the smallest beam. A byproduct of that is that you also have the least efficient lens. So it's kind of a trade-off where you might even have an easier time cutting because it is a smaller focus uh, focal beam, but it does have the least efficiency. So you're not producing as much power. So it's kind of like a catch. That's why we don't really promote it for cutting. Whereas like the G2 lens is very good for cutting. And that's why I say the three element lens is the best for engraving. So those three lenses um, push the beam and focus it the most out of the rest. Don Rideout asks, do we order extra lenses? Not sure what the difference in the lenses is. So we do offer four lenses. So the G2, best for cutting, the three element, best for engraving, and the G7 and the G8 are very similar lenses, but they're essentially a mix of the power of a G2 and the small focal length or, or the small focal beam size of the three element lens. So they're essentially kind of like a middle ground between the great cutting of a G2 and the great engraving of the three element. Michael Johnston asks, what materials have you tested for cutting slash engraving? So we've tested three millimeter plus plywood, six millimeter plywood, quarter inch plywood, three millimeter opaque acrylic. You can actually only cut and engrave opaque acrylic, any type of transparent acrylic, even if it's semi-transparent, the beam will shine right through, hit your waste material and actually end up hitting the back of your acrylic, uh, which is pretty cool or not cool at all, depending on how you look at it. Um, so yeah, opaque acrylic, we've done cardboard and paper products, and we've also done genuine leather. Genuine leather doesn't cut well because it shrinks under the extreme heat of cutting, but it engraves very, very well. And I'm sure you can eventually dial in your settings and choose kind of a thin, genuine leather, and you could probably get some cutting out of that too. So in terms of the woods, you can cut and engrave all three of those sizes that I listed, uh, quarter inch being kind of the upper echelon of what you can cut, and it's going to depend on what type of wood you have. So super dense wood, you're going to have a harder time cutting. You might have to increase the passes, um, play with the settings a little bit. 
Uh, but yes, quarter inch, I'm, I'm very confident you can cut and engrave up to quarter inch. Um, same thing for the opaque acrylic. As long as it's opaque, you should be able to cut up to six millimeter acrylic. Uh, we've only tested it with three millimeter opaque acrylic, but I use the same settings uh, that I use for three millimeter plywood. So extrapolating that, um, you should be able to take the same quarter inch or six millimeter cut settings and use that for the six millimeter opaque acrylic. But we will get some in stock here and I will give that a test as well. Don Rideout asks, not lo looking to cut, just laser engrave. So if you're just looking to engrave and you're not looking to cut, I would go with the three element lens and then you can play with either the G7 or G8 lens. Chris Bird asks, I need the idiot proof lens. The idiot proof lens is going to be the G2 because you can cut and engrave. You don't need anything else. You can cut, engrave. You can get the full use case of the laser with one lens. Um, if you want to add on to that, then go with the three element lens because now you can get super detailed uh, engraving as well as cutting with the G2. Roger Roger asks, once again, which lens is best for engraving? The best lens just for engraving, three element lens. Modulonic asks, hi, will you offer any fume extraction solutions? So as of right now, we're not interested in offering fume extraction systems. Uh, just like your shop vac that you hook up to your dust shoe, we kind of let that... Uh, Kind of let that part be chosen by you, the customer. Um, in the future, if you guys are demanding it, I can definitely figure out and develop a, a simple fume extraction system that will kind of exhaust to a window or a door, or your garage door, so you can get kind of that, that particulate, that smoke out of your workshop. So as of right now, I would recommend just going with a four to eight inch inline fan and ducting it to uh, the outside, whether that's window, garage door, regular door, just getting a inline fan to, to suck that air in and to get it as uh, outside away from your, your, your workshop. Digital AKA David asks, how about air assistance? Maybe I missed it. So again, I'll repeat, air assist will actually come free with every laser. Um, it's a 12 volt radial fan pushing air through this little system uh, that points it towards where your laser goes. And all you have to do is plug in this little two pin connector to your fan extension cord here and you're good to go. Roger Roger asks, can you give a brief explanation of how to install, as in where to mount it, power hookup, also what's included, i.e. wiring, etc.? So I'll give you a quick rundown on how to install your laser. So first, your laser itself gets installed onto the acrylic base. The acrylic base gets installed onto your router mount via these two M5 bolts. And then all you have to do is feed the laser power extension cord and the fan extension cord through the drag chain. So for me, because uh, this is a kind of a temporary setup for the time being, I just use zip ties and it works just fine. But for you guys, it's more of a permanent setup with your own long mill. So you just pop open the clips on the drag chain, you feed your wires through, um, just kind of like the NEMA motor wires, and you are good to go. So as for the signal wire, you are actually only having one signal uh, One signal wire. It's a two-pin connector going from your laser driver signal uh, output to your spindle pulse width modulation uh, signal input on your controller or your longboard. So it, it says spindle and ground. That's the one you're using, and it's just two-pin connector, uh, same connector size, as uh, most of the other accessories with our long mill and same connector size as your fan. So also the uh, laser driver does have its own power assist and that powers all three fans. So the fan on your actual driver, cooling down the PCB, the fan on your, on your diode, cooling down the diode, and it powers the fan on your air assist, um, creating that airflow to give you a cleaner engraving and cutting. Nicholas Jocks asks, what are dimensions of the controller? So the dimensions of the controller, so we're not completely done designing the enclosure, but roughly the size will be 120 millimeters by 120 millimeters. Steve D.I. asks, may have missed the explanation on the burn test patterns you have on the boards in front of you. Looks fantastic. Will that be available as a download for testing on various materials? So yeah, we will be uploading that test file in our resource section once we get to that. Nicholas Jocks asks, cabling between longboard and controller? So again, we'll run through the cabling. It's only one cable going from your laser driver to your actual longboard. It is the signal wire that's getting the signals and processing it in the driver and putting that signal towards your actual 
laser diode power wires. So telling it when to turn off, when to turn on, and to modulate the intensity that you are choosing in your job or in your testing. So that's just one two pin connector um, from the spindle and ground wire on your longboard going towards the signal in input or uh, signal output connector on your laser driver. Digital aka David asks, maybe take photos of your burn test so we can see the results? So we actually do have some photo, all the photos of the testing and we will be uploading that soon. Uh, first, we're worrying about supply chain, testing, production. We're moving along pretty well. And uh, after that's kind of finished and we have a little bit of downtime, we will put a lot of time and energy into creating a very comprehensive laser resource section um, so that we can include things like images of the test files, or maybe I'll, I'll definitely include that in an update um, on our blog, and then it'll get posted to the email update list, and it'll also get posted on the Facebook group. So you can just check out for that in the next few weeks. You'll get a chance to kind of scan through all my test files. Not all of them are perfect. It was really about dialing in settings and learning more about the laser, as well as putting the, the hardware of the laser through its paces, through repeated testing um, and, and a wide range of, of testing um, assets on the actual test file. So images, uh, grading the, the, the percentage of power, uh, text all the way from larger text to smaller text. Um, we really kind of put it through a universal test file that can kind of give you the rundown on the lens and laser um, for testing. Big 240 Zan asks, have you tried engraving on, say, tumblers, mugs, if you know what I mean? So tumbers, uh, I think I got that right. Uh, a coworker explained it to me that it's a metallic cup or maybe it's a ceramic cup. So if you're laser engraving that head on, um, you don't really want to be laser en engraving or trying to cut metal. This is not meant to laser engrave or cut metal, although you can essentially engrave the anodization off of the metal, giving it the illusion that you engraved onto the metal or some type of coating, as long as the coating doesn't have any harmful chemicals or unsafe materials in the coating, you can essentially engrave that coating off, revealing the actual aluminum or steel, which gives it that look of engraving. Or there are other, these other laser composite materials that look very metallic and metal-like and might actually include a little bit of metal alloy in them, but they're made for engraving. Um, that's the kind of stuff that you're going to be wanting to do. You're not going to re really going to be able to engrave something like this unless, let's say, I put a coating over it or an anodization over it, and then I essentially removed it using the laser. Nestor Aquino asks, laser noob question, will this be available to engrave on aluminum slash steel? So I think I just answered the next question um, with the previous answer, um, no to aluminum and steel, but yes to any anodization or um, layering that you put on the metal and you can essentially expose the metal and give it the look of engraving. So you do wanna be very careful about what's actually in the anodization and the actual layering or, or covering or, or paint that you're actually uh, engraving onto because it's not actually the metal that you're doing. You never really want to do bare uh, aluminum or steel because that could actually reflect the laser and could actually do damage to things in your workshop as well as yourself. So you want to be safe and, and, and not really do that. Big 240 Zan asks, I have an IoT relay plugged into that port. Can I put them both on there? So you have an IoT relay plugged in your controller. Um, I did speak to Chris. I think he helped you set that up. And he told me that you have it plugged into the coolant and ground inputs on your actual longboard, not actually your uh spindle control and ground on your longboard. So we actually plug the laser control from the driver to the spindle and the uh, it's the spindle and ground control input, not the coolant. So if I'm wrong, please send me a message on Facebook or email us uh, on our website through the contact us form or the technical help form. And we can discuss that in further and in more detail and make sure that you're good to use your relay as well as your laser. Digital aka David asks, one question is a spoil board. Should we have something on top of it so it's not burning slash cutting it? So for the spoil board, this one's a bit tricky. As you can see here, I didn't add anything to my spoil board. If uh, we cut through something or, or the laser engraved through something, we just let it mark up the spoil board. It's nothing too crazy. It almost never goes too deep. If you're looking for a quick and easy option, I would just buy a separate MDF, a piece of MDF uh, that's kind of inside your feet here. And then I would just screw it down in the corners 
and I would use that as your laser waste material. Um, and then at least if you want to kind of flatten that and reset that, you don't actually have to flatten your real uh, waste board. You can kind of leave that alone for CNCing, and you can kind of slide in your extra MDF waste board for your laser cutting um, and laser engraving needs. Steve D asks, knowing the costs on the other laser lens slash barrels would be helpful, particularly the G7 slash G8. So the cost of the lenses will be $20 Canadian each. You will save a little bit of money if you buy the laser lens pack uh, and get all four lenses, but just know that your laser um, does come with the G2 lens. Bucky's Customs asks, can I use the magnetic dust boot with the laser? So can you use the magnetic dust shoe? You cannot use the actual dust shoe part because as you can see, the laser is blocking where the dust shoe would connect to the actual uh, steel bracket here. So you can leave your steel bracket on and because Chris designed the magnetic dust shoe to be magnetic, um, you can just pull off your actual dust boot and yeah, keep that to the side while you're using your laser. The laser just screws on with these two M5 bolts. It takes less than a minute to screw those bolts in and you're good to go. So you do want to remove that dust shoe because it is um, a fire hazard. The bristles on the actual laser uh, could catch fire and uh, you kind of want to keep an eye on your actual laser and what it's doing, obviously with proper protection on uh, laser goggles and making sure you have that venting and air circulation in your workshop or wherever you're using your laser. So hopefully I got to all your questions. If you have any additional questions or I missed anything, uh, please get in touch. Um, catch me on the Facebook group. Uh, send us in uh, messages or emails via the website, cnc.com, the contact us form, the technical help form. Technical help form is the best way to get your questions answered or to schedule a chat with me if you want to talk over the phone because anything, any technical help form that gets submitted with the word laser in it gets automatically sent to me and then we can continue our conversation that way. So hopefully we uh, qualmed some of your concerns. Hopefully we gave you a little bit more clarity and uh, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.